Hello, Connected Learning Summit viewers. Welcome to our Hyperscore Showcase. You are currently listening to Vicious Cycle, written with the early version of Hyperscore by Solaban One, when he was the sixth grader around 2007. Funny enough, a year ago, he replied in our comments section on YouTube saying, wow, blast from the past. Hyperscore has grown dramatically since 2007, so we are so glad you chose to watch our video showcasing the wonderful developments since the software was first conceived. My name is Cecilia Rodebush, and I am the Director of Education at Harmony Line, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to increase access for anyone of any age or ability to create music as long as they have access to the internet and a device. We are so excited to be part of the Connected Learning Summit because we believe our simple web-based software, Hyperspool, is a participatory, playful, and creative learning tool that lowers barriers for composing music, yet still yields complex musical music. You will understand how amazing Hyperscore is today when you realize it can achieve seven or more of the Connected Learning Summit goals. Accessibility, games, well-being, online learning, and pedagogy, schools, STEAM, and making. Let's show you how Hyperscore works. Imagine with us a music room where 28 students are sprawled across the floor, sitting under the countertops, or working intently at desks on their Chromebooks or devices. Their heads bob along with the music that they themselves have created playing in their headphones. Students call out, wow, look what I just made, or this beat is so cool. Come see what I did to their friends. The teacher in this room is the guide on the side, checking in on everyone and offering advice or support to those who ask for it, and discussing student work as they make progress in creating their piece. In this scenario, students prepared for independent work by first creating a large group composition using a storybook or memory or emotional prompt. Through this project, they learned every tool they would use for their independent work. By using a storybook or prompt, students received a model of how one might first begin a composition or develop a story through music. Having a storyline in mind lends itself well to creating themes, choosing the form and structure for their work, and naming their resulting piece. In Dr. Kevin and Jennings' methodology, Inverted Pedagogy, pre-K to 12th grade students create first, then learn the musical terms for what they've created. As long as users have a device and access to the internet, anyone of any age or ability can write music without requiring prior knowledge of music theory. What a wonderful way to remove barriers for students who may consider themselves non-musicians. Imagine how powerful this interface could also be for students who do have some musical training. It's intuitive and easy to transfer their musical ideas into Hyperscore. Using a spiral curriculum of creating and learning experiences, students could engage in composing throughout their school years and continue on throughout their lives. This innovative, creative, playful, and participatory software I've described, Hyperscore, was originally created in the MIT Opera of the Future Lab by doctoral students Mary Farber and Egon Pastor under the guidance of composer and Muriel R. Cooper professor Todd McElroy in the early 2000s. Mary and Egon's work combined research on computer-assisted composition and visual interfaces to develop a system that uses color, length, and shape to paint a musical soundscape. Kevin Jennings, first doctoral research at the MIT Media Lab, created a harmonic controller that allowed for modulations, key changes, and structural changes by pulling on the line that runs down the center of the sketch window. From 2008 to 2020, I myself taught general and adaptive music, sharing Hyperscore with thousands of students because I believed it was the missing expressive link in my classes. I tried a composition unit with every grade level, 
but had never encountered the ease with which my students could generate musical stories until Hyperscore found me at a workshop. Let's talk a moment about all of the new features in Hyperscore with the introduction of the web-based version. Hyperscore still has the same rhythm, melody, and sketch window tools, as well as the arrow, pen tool, and scissor tool. There are now edit and undo buttons on the top toolbar next to the metronome slider. The lower toolbar now has the name your song, my scores, open scores, export button, and the familiar view all tool, which allows you to see everything on your workspace and window. The most exciting additions to our web-based hyperscore are the instrument sets tool found on the lower toolbar and the settings gear wheel on the top toolbar. The instrument sets tool allows the user to choose from 12 sets such as orchestral, world music, electronica, and jazz ensemble. Each set contains eight to 10 instrument choices and there are plans to add more. The settings gear will is my reward to students for writing their first rhythm and melody windows. Our CTO, Peter, added personalized interface features such as block notes versus the traditional teardrop shape, which indicated attack and decay. He also added the ability to turn the melody window into a rainbow colored C scale that correlates with most rainbow colored instruments like boom workers. Now comes the wow factor of thematic workspaces. When I show students the cotton candy, carnival, blacklight, and comic themes, to name a few, they are usually ecstatic. Peter also did a wonderful job of including a high contrast theme for students with vision impairments that has proven to be highly useful in the classroom. Becoming web-based allowed Hyperscore to be shared across the world. Frederico Ferrona, a music teacher in Puerto Portugal, found that his students were getting out their emotions through the motifs they were creating. One student's piece was full of colorful and playfulness, while another student's work was highly discordant and full of tension. Verona felt strongly that composing had given his students a voice about their experiences at home and school or about their life during COVID. Composer, musician, elementary, and collegiate music teacher Odysseus Segredos from Athens, Greece, was able to have students work together in small groups to develop a baseline, percussive accompaniment, melodies, and chords to create amazing original compositions as well as covers of existing songs. He found his elementary students to be much more open to creative composing than some of his college students whose composing experience had been theory-based. Composing music has become an excellent way for students to express themselves musically, no matter their academic situation. Music teacher David Casali wrote an article about the aha moment when his student Jade, who did not think of herself as a musician, completed the task of writing hyperscore accompaniment for a scratch video game. As David stated, she turned in one of the strongest submissions in the class and got to show off a creative talent for music she didn't realize or believe she had. David clearly saw a solution to the equity and access issues that create barriers for students in seeing themselves as someone who could take piano, voice, or instrumental lessons, not to mention compose without knowledge of theory. In Jade's case, Hyperscore gave music back to her as a means of expression. Speaking of means of expression, we are currently launching the Hyperscore Challenge in schools across America and around the world with teams lined up in Nigeria, Sri Lanka, Ghana, and Estonia. Patterned after robotics clubs, students will meet as teams with an adult leader after school on their own to compose music using silent movies or video game prompts. After learning the tools, students may continue to compose using their Hyperscore Challenge account. Because Hyperscore downloads MIDI files, which can be uploaded to software like NoteFlight or GarageBand, the student's piece can be arranged in standard notation for instrumentalists to perform. We are encouraging challenge participants to have their music played in a public concert by local instrumentalists or in Hyperscore for Make Music Day, June 21st, 
2024. This past August, we published our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade curriculum with our partner, Music First Classroom, and we are working to place it in with all the free resources on our website, www.newharmonyline.org. New Harmony Line has given thousands of children and adults across the world the opportunity to compose music creatively without having to know anything about music theory. We continue to explore fresh ideas, such as composing motifs that can be accompanied by student improvisation on fourth instruments, writing prompts that can be remixed, and working in collaboration with the classroom teacher. We've been exploring endless possibilities for cross-disciplinary learning in our second Saturday composition workshops held at 9.30 Central Time, of course, on the second Saturday of the month. We've written a creative piece about a capybara's spine-tingling encounter with an alligator called Cappy's Day. A climate change piece based on the sound of a glacier melting called appropriately, The Melt. A mathematically inspired piece focusing on fractional divisions we call fraction attraction. Our chief technology officer shared a piece he'd created after seeing Babbage's Difference Engine, otherwise known as the first computer. Peter's piece, The Countess of Lovelace, echoed the whirring, clicking, and tapping sounds of the engine a perfect example of how engineering can be a compositional focus. Our team will be teaching at a Boston area STEAM Day coming up on October 20th and recently found great success at the Cambridge Science Festival. Perhaps we can do a workshop or a Zoom for you. Our ever-growing hyperscore is something we love sharing with you and hopefully you will share with your students, colleagues, and family after this Connected Learning Summit. Thank you for watching.